Thanks be to God indeed. The sermonic theme for uh, this third Sunday of Easter is turn up the light. Turn up the light. There's this couple struggling. Maybe there's several couples struggling, but I'm talking about one couple in particular. In fact, this couple has struggled so much they broke up. But because of their undeniable chemistry, they got back together. Nate tends to be the one that is outspoken and engaged in the public sphere. But a crisis emerges in the community in Phoebe. His trans woman partner steps up to help in volunteering and fundraising in response to the tragedy that has happened in their community, she emerges as a leader. She wants to do something about the pain she sees in their community. She organizes a concert and the event is a huge success. Through art, she provides a space for people to express their feelings. The light shines on her. The light is really shining bright on her. People are thanking her for her efforts. She is feeling good about her work and the results. Meanwhile, Nate is stewing. Generally, it is he who shows up and Phoebe who supports him. That's how this relationship works. Nate is consumed by jealousy. This is where we enter the biblical text this morning. A couple of disciples are having a very serious conversation about where is the body of Jesus. Actually, this is way beyond a serious discussion. The women have reported the body is missing. But according to Luke's account, angels appeared and shared with the women they are looking for the risen in a place of death. They all but say, Jesus is alive, ladies. Now I want to pause here. Sometimes when people tell us their truth, we absolutely do not believe them. Based on the bandwidth of our faith and intellect, we cannot get to where they are, even though we have heard them speak. We conclude in the words of Minister Valerie that the people or person are cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. This right here is one of these situations where the messenger is looked at with suspicion. The disciples have been given information that does not comfort them at all. They've been told that Jesus is alive, but they are not really buying it. On the road to Emmaus is where we arrive on the scene today with two disciples talking about the situation a little bit more. They go back over everything that has happened. They go back over the notes that they have. As humans, we have a need to understand. We have a need to make things make sense. And a lot of times, stuff doesn't add up. Violence is unleashed from teens in the Chicago downtown area to mass shootings in public spaces like theaters and schools, religious institutions. Have a need to make it make sense. Ralph Yarl, maybe you've heard his name in the news, a 16-year-old was sent by his parents to pick up his two siblings. Like Chicago, sometimes you have two streets in the same name, but one street, like 157th Street and 157th Place, or 157th Street and 157th Place. With such a situation, Ralph ended up at the wrong house. He knocked on the door. And an 84-year-old man with a daily appetite, according to his grandson of Fox News, in a fully armed house, sees danger. He had been sleeping, and when he hears his doorbell, he stirs. He retrieves his gun. He opens, looks through the door. He sees a black male. And Lester, 84 years old, opens fire through a glass door, shooting a team with a .32 caliber revolver. Forget that whole thing about asking questions first. Lester says he saw the guy pull his door handle, and he shoots the kid in the head. Once on the ground, he shoots him again in the arm. And the discussion continues 
on the road to Emmaus about standing ground, the right to stand ground, the right to protect yourself. Who should own a gun? And when is certain kind of guns too much and too easy to access? A whole lot of stuff doesn't make sense, and the disciples were struggling. They were going back over the information they had. Based on the information they had, they were still in the dark. Okay, so we got nobody. Okay, so what did the lady say? Okay, so nobody has seen him? Honestly, what would you have thought? What narrative might you have come up with in 2023? A lot, whole lot has just happened. We have grief and trauma and shock still fresh in our bodies. Talk about overload. And so they're talking and they're walking and a man joins them. They were hitting their head against the wall and running down dead in roads. And they were getting nowhere. And the mysterious man asked them questions. And they are like, you don't know the biggest news in town what rock have you been under? And so they try to catch him up, body missing, reports of he's alive. It's been three days, and there's nobody. There's even a bit of disappointment while one relays, we had thought he would be the one to save us. But look, he's gone. When you leave your home in the daytime and you are not aware that you will be gone long, and you come back home at night, what is the first thing you do when you enter? If your lights are off, you generally will reach for the switch, but why? Because you desire light. You desire visibility. You turn on the lights because light gives access to sight. The disciples were in the dark and they needed the light turned all the way up on their situation. There's a spiritual process that one goes through that's been called the dark night of the soul. It is when a person experiences an absence of meaning, when they practically feel numb. It is a hard stage to go through. One feels like God is not present. One feels alienated. It is a struggle just to get up in the morning. This process, the dark night of the soul, requires the shedding of previous conceptual frameworks, such as identity, relationship, career, habit, or belief systems that previously allowed them to construct meaning for their life. In other words, like the house that fell due to a mudslide, I think it was in Utah, their foundation is in crisis. But when the light comes on, they emerge with a deeper perception of life and their place in it. But first, they must go through this passage called the dark night of the soul. Sometimes when we are going through, the worst thing we can do is make a decision or even talk. Our faith is not great. Our hope is diminished. Our understanding is perplexed. Our motivation is low. And like the disciples, our vision is compromised. We are not in a good space. We might even be experiencing a dark night of the soul. When you are in this space, there is often less light. A couple is arguing. One leaves and gets in a car, and before she gets a block away, she crashes. It's hard to function well when something is troubling us. Towards the end of their walk, Jesus turns up the light. The disciples are connecting with the stranger, and when they get to their des destination, they invite him to stay. He shares the same information, nothing new, but they're listening. They share a meal together. This is when Jesus really turns up the light and they see him for who he is. Jesus shows up, Jesus journeys with them, and Jesus turns up the light. There are plenty of things that make no sense in the world. There's plenty on the news that can steal your joy. There's a lot of darkness in our world. It's hard to digest it all. There's enough happening in our cities and our communities, and families have more drama than the law allows. But don't let the mountains block your view of the ocean. Don't let the storms cause you to miss out on the rainbow. Don't let the surety of violence rob you of the mystery of God. Don't let trauma block your vision of the miracle that stands before you. Don't let fear block you from your faith. There is so much to see and behold. 
There's a beautiful picture circulating on the internet of a 104-year-old lady getting married this week. Now, I've heard a few disparaging comments ranging from, is she in her right mind? And what can she actually do at this age? Apparently, she can get married. I think it's absolutely beautiful that a 104-year-old human is still living her best life and found someone worth tying the knot with for however many days God gives them. Turn up the light. She's gorgeous. Turn up the light. Love knows no limits. Turn up the light. What could possibly await us in our present chapter? Jesus doesn't leave until the lights are turned all the way up, and neither should we. The world needs our light. The world needs our faith. The world needs our hope. So we're going to stick around until we know that people are okay. We're going to turn on the lights so that folks can recognize just how far God has brought them. We're going to turn up some lights and testify. I may not be where I want to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. And when folks forget, we are going to share the good news over and over until they can recognize God's goodness and mercy for themselves. When we walk into darkness, we turn on the lights. The disciples came to see that Jesus fulfilled everything that he came to do. The lights were turned on. The disciples saw God's purpose for them and the Messiah. It all made sense now. Y'all ready to turn up the lights? It looks like we need to turn on some lights in here. Actually, I was thinking about it. It looking a little dark in here today. I'm going to need you all to turn up your faith and turn on the lights. So after this tragedy... In Phoebe's community, she saw her worth. With the lights on, she also had to realize that her relationship was not going to make it. She loved Nate fiercely. She liked his confidence, and she liked the stride in his back, and she liked the way he took on the world. But as a woman of faith, she saw that she had something to offer the world, too. Anybody that asks us to dim our light is not, not really a good person. Her voice resonated with folks. Her humbleness made her approachable. The love in her heart and her faith instilled in her by her grandmother was rising up in her and she made a decision without realizing she made one that for the rest of her life, she would always keep her light lit. She would never again dampen her light for another person. She saw how the light of God in her made a difference in the world. As followers of Christ, as people who have questions, as people on this journey, may we all shine. May we all shine just a little bit brighter in the world. Turn up the light. Amen.